Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Thursday already, April 23rd. It's 8.55 a.m. I started looking into my email, and one of the first things I started reading was Dawn's email. And every bit of this is good, so I'm going to share it with you. All right, listen up. This is good. Okay, they're all short. But um, very meaningful for this time in our lives. All right, now, the first one is in the uh, first section called Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. In a vision, I saw a tortoise with its head retracted into the shell. And I heard the Lord admonishing us to stay safe and to remember that ultimately he is our help and our safe haven in times of trouble. We must stay in touch with him and trust him to surround us with a hedge of protection. Psalm 46 1 says, God is is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Okay? Now, Doug, uh, Doug Addison put this word, and sometimes I, you know, I wondered about his, did he, was he getting them from the Lord, or was it, uh, like a thought of wisdom that came to him because it usually doesn't say thus saith the Lord or whatever but the other day it was like there was the word and then it said in quotes something thus saith the Lord unquote so I believe that Doug's and I could be wrong and Don, you can correct me if you see this um, this says, get ready for detailed instructions to flow from heaven. Okay? Uh, so maybe he gets like a word of wisdom dropped into his spirit. So he doesn't add, thus saith the Lord. But I still wanted to include that. Because the Lord is going to give us instruction if we're waiting on him. And listening to you know, as we read our word or be in prayer, he's supposed to be giving us instruction. Okay, if we're listening, if if you're not, or you don't believe it, all, he will, he may not. See, you need that faith, that belief, open ears, l waiting on God, giving him time to answer or tell you, you know, what you're supposed to do. Okay, now this says, wait a minute, I scooted it down. Okay, this is called Wake Up from Daughter of God, April 12th, 2020. She received this, or what was a vision, and then uh, interpretation. I had a vision. I saw people sleeping. Someone was waking them up. First by a gentle nudge and a whisper. Wake up. A couple of them woke up. Then they started shaking them and saying, Wake up! in a normal voice. A few more woke up. Then they shouted, Wake up! and started pouring buckets of water over their faces. So it seems God, now this is her talking, that was the end of the vision. It seems God will gradually get louder and louder as time goes by. The shaking will progressively get worse for those not awake. God bless. I d that makes so much sense. I pray they wake up before it's too late. 
Oblivious. This is titled Oblivious. It's dated April 22nd, 2020 by Victoria Ang, A-N-G. It's called, well, it's a prophetic dream. All right. This is a dream now. I found myself beside a very dark forest that I knew I had to enter to help people that were in the forest and had lost their way. As I entered the forest, everything was pitch black, but I could still see as there was a supernatural light guiding me. I went deep into the forest where I found a group of unknown people. These people were standing in the dark, but they were complaining and defiant about their circumstances. Some were almost oblivious as to the severity of their situation. One man started giving me a hard time, telling me he knew the way better and the way I pointed we must leave was not the correct way. So I picked him up and flung him over my shoulders to carry him as he was truly headed in the wrong direction, which was very dangerous. I told the rest of the people to follow, and I would help get them to a safe place. I took them to a campground where we were to wait for the next instructions. I was made to know there were several other groups in this dark forest that I needed to help. So I went back into the forest alone and left the others with instructions to stay waiting at the campground. And they were to wait for the next plan of action. The dream ended. Her interpretation is, the enemy has deceived many in various ways, and they truly cannot see God's truth. They have lost their way in confusion and falling prey to the enemy's lies. Oh boy, is that not the truth or what? Their hearts are not evil but deceived and have fallen into traps set forth by the enemy. Some are oblivious that they have even fallen into the enemy's traps. In God's great mercy and love, he can use those that have been trained to help lead them back to God's path and bring them to a place of safety so God can continue to guide them in his ways. We serve such an awesome, loving God. All glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what this dream says to me? In that message from the Lord about the two raptures, he said, immediately following the first rapture, there will be three days of darkness, utter thick darkness. So many people will be left behind because they were deceived into believing false doctrines, such as once saved, always saved. So they had a bunch of unrepented sin on their heart. But they were good people. They loved the Lord. They truly believed. The blood of the Lamb covered all their sins, and if they repented, they were somehow uh, lacking faith, right? That's what they believe. So God knows their hearts. So they're in the darkness. The people who go to heaven are coming back. We or the some others. I'm not sure if it's the bride or everyone. I don't know. It wasn't made clear. But it, I felt like it was 
the people who go to heaven in the first rapture, we would get trained and come back. Some people think it's just a transfiguration down here on earth. However the Lord put it to you, that doesn't mean they're wrong or I'm wrong. The Lord gave it to me that we go up in the twinkling of an eye. We go straight to heaven and then we come back and we help those left behind. Now doesn't this say. These people. It says. And it, clearly she says she picks up a man. And flings him over her shoulder. Now how many women. In this body. Could do that. Pick up a man that's giving her a hard time. Now, how many people give. Me and those preaching the truth a hard time because they believe they're right. Oh, they so believe they're right. And so they're like, no, it's not that way. That's not the way. It's this way. See? Oh, this is so prophetic and so true. I mean, I just said, I have to share this. Because it says, where was it? Um, she had a supernatural light guarding, guiding her. See, the Lord said we would have a supernatural light. Um, Okay, in her interpretation, the enemy has deceived many in various ways. False doctrines, and they really believe it, but they love God. And they love one another. They truly cannot see God's truth. Because they've been blinded and deceived. They have lost their way in confusion and falling prey to the enemy's lies. So the Lord knows their hearts. Their hearts are not evil, but deceived, and have fallen into traps set forth by the enemy. You see, the Lord knows our hearts. This gives, this just gives me a lot of hope for those who um, I feared could die but the three days of darkness come immediately after which Jesus said is going to actually protect his other children these are the people he's talking about they fall in prey to the enemy's lies so they weren't ready to go so awesome anyway <clears throat> I'll move on we serve such an awesome, loving God. All glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. I probably said that, but it's worth saying again. This is dated April 23rd. That's today. Carefully use caution. I believe you are getting certain areas of your life ahead of where I am leading and directing you. So this is probably not for everybody, but I have a feeling, let me finish. Not every word is given to everybody. Some words are given for the bride. Some words are given for those left behind. And that's why it sounds like, Oh, we're going to have all this destruction. We better uh, store up water and food. Them, those messages, I'm convinced, are not necessarily wrong. They're for those people who do not believe there, there's a pre-tribulation rapture. Remember, if you're not found loving his return, looking for it, you're not going to go in it. Because you don't have the faith to believe it's going to happen. Okay, let me move on. I believe you are getting certain areas of your life 
ahead of where I am leading and directing you. You are not alone. Due to extenuating circumstances, and aren't we having extenuating circumstances going on right now in America and all over the world? We've never seen anything like this. A shutdown of everything. Can't go here. Can't go, can't go anywhere except to buy food or pick up drugs. Craziness. All right. Due to extenuating circumstances, you feel you need to take control, which puts you in a perilous position. Getting out from under my wings of protection leaves you vulnerable to many hazards. Slow down. Weigh your decisions very carefully. Exercise restraint of your flesh. Stressful times do not warrant far-reaching measures. And the verse is Isaiah 40, 31 from the King James Version. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And I believe that's when we get to heaven. And this was given to Kevin Robinson. Now, here's what came to my mind. There's been some protesting going on in certain areas. Pastors having church and thinking they're going to get away with it. They're breaking the law of keeping the social distancing, which we don't like. And they're saying it's, I watched a video, Pastor was going on about how they cannot uh, prevent us from the first constitution allows us the right to assemble. Well, this is a extenu this is an extenuating circumstance, even though we know the truth about it. The law is saying, stay six feet apart. You cannot gather more than ten people. And if you step out there and say, we're going to meet anyway, we're going to go protest, which puts you, well, some of them, they were more than ten feet, six feet apart. I think if you do it right, it's all right. But you better have the word of the Lord behind it. He doesn't want us to be thrown in jail and to suffer through that needlessly. You can communicate with the Lord in your home and online. And we're having fellowship, even though we're not in the same room. You're not listening to this while I'm talking. You're listening to it later. But you you can leave a comment and start a conversation up if you want. Sometimes that works. Some people never reply to other comments. I'll go to other channels and they'll have a, a thread going. 63 or more people commenting. You know what I'm saying? It's a conversation going on from something that somebody said in a video. That's kind of rare on my channel. I don't know why, but it's it's all in how you started, I guess. But that's what I got out of that, that we don't need to put ourselves in a perilous position. Don't get out from under his wings of protection. All right. The last one is dated April 23rd. There are many voices vying for your attention. And boy howdy, there are. More supernatural voices of the dark side vying for your attention as well as human beings. Oh, come do this. Oh, come do that. Oh, come let's do this. Whatever. 
Each one seems to be saying something different, and you have been confused and perplexed as to which one deserves your attention. I say to you that my spirit within you will speak to you, and the confusion and concern must go. Ask me, and I will give you clear instruction about what you are to do and when you are to do it. Trust me and listen. It's kind of the same as the one above. Waiting on the Lord, the dream one. Anyway, I thought they were all great. And, oh, the uh, Bible verse put to that is John 10, 27 from the NASB. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And Jonas Boland got that one. Okay, I pray that this blessed you today. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. My computer, myself, the internet connection. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. And let's all remember to turn off our Wi-Fis and cell phones when they're not needed. People can leave messages on your phone. You don't have to answer every one. Let us try to protect ourselves from too much of the energy put off by these things. Okay? And remember, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.